keeping an eye on imaging. Discussion and commentary based on articles from Jack Cardiovascular Imaging. Hi, welcome to another round of the dynamic editorial for the Jack Cardiovascular Imaging. My name is Dr. Chandrasekhar and I'm one of the associate editors for the journal. My guest here is Dr. Albert Lardo, Associate Professor of Medicine and Biomedical Engineering at the Johns Hopkins Institute. Uh, and we're going to talk about a very exciting paper that's coming in a, a f- near future issue of the Jack Cardiovascular Imaging. Welcome, Dr. Lardo. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, tell, tell us a little about this paper and uh, what does it address and how does it fill a gap of something that we already don't know. Sure. So uh, we, um, we started this study about uh, three years ago. We first uh, demonstrated the ability to do viability imaging by CT. Um, the radiation dose uh, was quite high, though. So we were interested in the ability to do both CTA and uh, viability imaging, but with a low-dose protocol. So typically, these protocols are done by retrospective acquisitions in which the X-ray beam is on for multiple heartbeats. Uh, And then from those heartbeats, we can then reconstruct whatever phase of the cardiac cycle we like. Um, For this particular approach, um, we decided to use a prospective approach. Um, And this is uh, equivalent to what has been done on the CTA side now with a couple of uh, newer protocols. But what we wanted to demonstrate was that we could reduce the radiation dose by an order of magnitude using a prospective gated uh, approach without decreasing too much the tube settings of current and, uh, and voltage, which can lead to uh, poor signal-to-noise ratio. So what we're hoping from this study and what we've implemented now at Hopkins is the ability to do viability imaging, an additional scan on top of the CTA with a very low radiation dose. Yeah, that, that's a big advantage. There's so much care about radiation right now, and so anything that reduces radiation and gives us valuable information is pretty good. Uh, so you routinely use this in your protocol now uh, for patients? Yes, yeah, so um, we, have, uh, we have since the time of that paper have now upgraded our scanner to a 320 detector scanner from the 64. And what we do now is a, is a very comprehensive workup uh, by CT that includes adenosine stress perfusion imaging, um, followed by REST CTA, and then the final acquisition is uh, after five minutes after the last contrast injection is this delayed enhanced CT study that's done in a prospective fashion. So we use it as part of a, at the end, as a total workup uh, from perfusion, CTA, uh, and anatomy, and atherosclerosis imaging and then follow it up with, uh, with viability imaging in a prospective fashion. So we're able to do all of, those, uh, all of those acquisitions in about the radiation dose and contrast dose that's currently used for retrospective 64-slice CTA studies. So it's quite impressive that we're able to get so much more information for the same radiation and contrast budget. Uh, in this animal model that you used, uh, it it's trying to kind of put on a scientific footing what we probably already do in practice, try to reduce radiation as much. You had an ischemia reperfusion model. Would it make a difference if you had a, a non-reperfused myocardium like the patients we see sometimes? Yeah, it's a, it's a terrific question. I think, um, I think it would, indeed, because with our particular model, we are, when we reperfuse at 90 minutes, we're actually generating some reperfusion injury. And we're able to image that very clearly as, uh, as no reflow or microvascular right. obstruction. Um, and I think that in the, uh, in the, no, the non-reperfused uh, ischemic model, that we would see something uh, quite a bit different, actually. That is, a void of contrast in that particular bed of the myocardium until we've had sufficient uh, diffusion of the iodine tracer into the cells. And, 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 the, and the enhancement mechanism acutely is actually very different than that yeah. chronically. So yeah. I think that um, I think the, the enhancement patterns would be very different, and certainly the perfusion component of the study would be different. The other question is you had to use a dye which is probably a little different than what you would use in the patient population. Would, would Do you modify it for what we use in... No, actually, um, the, the, the contrast agent we use is what we use clinically. 
um, and the uh, the total radiation, the total contrast dose that we used was probably that of about a, a, a equivalent to a, a dose and a half for a human equivalent dose. So we used a little bit more iodine in this particular study because the hypothesis was really that we can get clinically relevant quality using an order of magnitude less radiation. So we wanted to make sure that we actually accomplished a pacification of the, uh, of the infarct. And you think this is going to be a, a commonly done thing in future, where you would get an extra scan to look at viability since the information is yeah, there? Yeah, absolutely. And what's what we're very excited about is, and even in this, uh, the most recent session of the American Heart Association, we saw such an increase uh, since our original description of the viability studies, a huge increase in the number of centers now performing these these viability delayed studies in, in their patient population. So we're convinced now, I think, that the ability to reduce the radiation as much as we have for this particular late scan will only uh, help encourage people to, to get this information, especially patients with devices that cannot go under undergo MRI. So there you go. That uh, puts it into perspective, wherever we can reduce radiation and gain information, that's uh, always a, a highly desirable thing. And Dr. Lardo's paper provides a scientific rationale of what we are already doing and will be doing more in future. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lardo. That was uh, very useful. And thank you for listening. And I hope uh, you found it useful. Keeping an eye on imaging. Have a question or comment about a CBN story? Send us an email at cbnfeedback at acc.org.